Welcome back to another episode. Today I'm gonna review the plug and play Kenjin Dragon Quest and let's go! Kenjin Dragon Quest is a plug and play hack and slash adventure game that is based on the Dragon Quest series. Kenjin is the Japanese word for Sword Master. It was released by Square Enix and also developed by Square Enix in the year 2003 but only in Japan. The game is almost completely in the Japanese language and for me this was a downside because I could not follow the story of the game and also because the game gives you hints on how to fight certain enemies so there was a lot of try and error for me in this game but in the end it was only released in Japan so why would they change the language also you should play this game on uh, NTSC TV because I've tested it on three different TVs on an um, old PAL TV and of course it was only in black and white I also tried it on this one but this one can play both PAL and NTSC signals so it worked perfectly and I also tried it on my HD TV and yeah there it worked also perfectly okay about the storyline the game takes place in the world of Aleph Guard which is the same world like the first Dragon Quest game and you play a warrior who is a descendant of Roto and your quest is to rescue Princess Laura and free the kingdom of Alephgard from the evil Dragon Lord. The quest is broken into 8 chapters that will take you throughout all the locations of Alephgard and at the end of each chapter you will fight a boss character. Okay, now that we know the storyline, let's take a closer look on the box and yeah, what's inside. Here we have the box. And as you can see, it is very colorful and I really like the artwork. It charms the eye in some kind of way. And on the back, you can see some gameplay footage or better let's say some screenshots of the gameplay. And yeah, like I said, everything is in Japanese because the game was released in Japan. Yeah, that's basically the box. Let's take a look what's inside. First you get, of course, the manual for the game, then AV cables, then you get the plug and play system and in the end it's a kind of a mini console that has the game ROM on the, on the system so you don't need a PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 or any other system to play it and the reason why it's called plug and play is because you have to connect this little console with your TV and in the end plug it into your TV and play the game. Now on the front you have four motion sensors. The shape of the system it looks like a shield and on top you have a red light and when you turn on the system it lights up red. And on the back you have your on and off switch, you have an AV connector and also a connector for an AC adapter. Over here we have a memory cartridge slot and yeah, you can also play this system with batteries. You just have to unscrew the screw and uh, put in four AA batteries. And yeah, this was the console and now to the memory card because this must be the coolest looking memory card that I've ever seen because it looks like a little book. Just plug it in and there you go. And the last thing of course, the controller. It's a little toy sword that handles very well and it has a coating that reflects the light so the sensors can read the movement of the sword or better let's say of the player and it also has a wrist strap. About the gameplay. You can compare the gameplay of Kenshin Dragon Quest to a light gun shooter or a rail shooter because most of the game is set on a predetermined path that you can only travel in one direction, with few exceptions of side paths. 
You have three different attacks, horizontal, diagonal and vertical. To move the cursor in the menu, you just have to point the sword and to make selections, you swing the sword. You can also use your shield by showing the broad side of the sword to the screen and to move forward in the game, you just have to point forward and throughout the game you will learn some magic spells and to bring up the spell book, you have to be in the shield position and move the sword closer to the sensor. Now, by hitting enemies and blocking attacks, you will build up a sword meter and when this is completed, you're unable to unleash a super attack. The game has some few RPG elements like yeah, you get experience, you level up and you get more hit points and more magic points, but that's it. Then also you will um, collect some coins throughout the game and those coins can be used to buy items at the shop. The learning curve in this game is very good because um, First you have a tutorial, then the game starts very easy and the further you get, the harder it becomes. Okay, enough with the talking. Now I'm gonna embarrass myself in front of the camera by playing one of the chapters, but I'm gonna do this in style.